the University of Auckland to um, give um, today's lecture. But um, before we begin, let me briefly introduce Dr. Yoon. He um, received his academic training at Seoul National University and then went to the United States and got his PhD at the University of California, Berkeley. Um, his main fields of teaching and research are cultural geography, um, environmental ideas of East and West, and Korean geomancy. And he has published many books, one of which is called um, The Lecture of Feng Shui in Korea. It was published in uh, 2008, and it has received 11 book reviews, um, including major journals such as JAS, um, Geographical, Geographical Review, or Review of Korean Studies. So um, if you're interested in uh, the Korean tradition of Pungsu or Feng Shui, then I would highly recommend that you um, get this book. And he's also a poet. He's published a collection of his poems in Korean. Um, so the topic of today's lecture is the role of Pungsu in uh, Korean culture. So I believe we are in for retreat tonight. Actually, um, I'm working on a monograph on Mount Gumgang, and so I expect to learn a lot from, from him from this lecture. So please welcome Dr. Yun with a warm welcome. Thank you for a warm introduction. Yes, I was born and brought up in Korea. I am a Korean, but at the moment, I live in New Zealand. I studied Maori, <laughs> New Zealand Maori. And also in New Zealand, when we give this kind of ceremonial talks, we normally start with Maori greetings. If you allow me, I will go through that briefly. <laughs> okay. Tihei Maori ora, kia tato. I just greeted in Maori, saying that it is my privilege to be here, and please be with me, and greetings to you all from my heart. Actually, Maori people are warm people. I learned a lot from them, and spent more than 10 years to produce a very thin, small book. So I left a part of my heart with the people there where I live. OK, now today I will talk about an important essence of Korean mentality and Korean behavior. That is Pungsu uh, or geomancy. OK, today I will talk about basically two overview the influence of uh, geomancy on traditional culture rather than modern culture. In fact, modern Korean culture is uh, close to you people. It is a globalized Korean culture. But traditional Korean culture, which is uh, quite separated from modern Korean culture. So it is, uh, the emphasis here is a traditional way of thinking traditional way of dealing with environment rather than contemporary urban scenes. OK. And then, the, before going over I mean, the, the, the role of uh, feng shui or feng shui in Korea, I would like to talk about what it is about briefly. So feng shui in Korean. Or sometimes we use the feng shui jiri. But that is a, a kind of a Korean way of pronouncing Chinese concept called the feng shui. But the Chinese will never use the term feng shui jiri. But this is a distinctly, oh. Yes, here. Yes, so it's a, there. It's a manual one here. But so here, so it's a, but this is a, just a, like a Christianity. Christianity is from Palestine, but as it entered to Europe and then America and so on, it has adapted to local environment. It was evolved to different directions. Feng Shui the same. Although it is from China, 
when it came to Korea, it has uh, different features, different characteristics. So it's, uh, the term Pungsujiri, uh, this term is actually, in my view, is a uh, 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 kind of a, uh, this uh, Korean term which doesn't exist in Chinese culture. But I prefer, in fact, the term Germancy to Pungsui or Pungsu because it is an English word, although it doesn't originally mean Chinese Germancy as a such. Originally, it means that actually Arabic feature of a dividing uh, the uh, places by throwing earth, <coughs> dirt. But it is something to do with uh, uh, finding auspicious site on land. So I think it is adapted to Chinese Germancy. But traditionally, we use the Germancy. But now, if you uh, hit the the, uh, the word in the kind of uh, as, a, uh, as a kind of uh, iconic word, you won't find many. The, it is uh, gradually being replaced by Chinese term of uh, feng shui, but I think I would like to restore the concept of uh, the Germancy in English word. So it is uh, defined, uh, I define it as a unique and highly systematized ancient Chinese art not contemporary Chinese art. So just like a Latin uh, or Greek culture in European context, this ancient uh, the northern Chinese uh, art of selecting auspicious site and arranging harmonious structures such as uh, graves and houses and cities, uh, cities on them. It is a kind of a, a cosmological as well as a cultural ecological concept. And then this uh, feng shui in Korean to you, or basically Western people or foreigners, other than East Asians, uh, it is an enigma. A French scholar, very until uh, recently, he declared that if there is one thing that has captivated the Western mind, the one thing that Western mind couldn't understand very well, that is uh, German seed or feng shui. So it's a Lidam, the, uh, the well-known scholar, he argued that it is a grossly superstitious system. It has uh, no scientific element in it. Yes, it, it is uh, partly true. But just uh, like uh, alchemy in the Western world, alchemy is not science, but it did push up, uh, push forward the progress of science, such as what physics and chemistry, into the modern fashion. Well, feng shui itself is not science. It is a superstition, but it does have some of that element in it, in my view. So the idol argued that it is the rudiment of a natural science of China. The closest form of a modern science may be environmental science, in fact. The way you understand the environment and how to manage the environment, so in that sense. Yes, I think this uh, 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 item's view is uh, quite interesting and uh, relevant to some degree. And then the root, the root to argue that it is a quasi-scientific system, quasi-religious system. So it is, in a way, not real science, uh, real religion, but similar to that. Yes, it is uh, quite accurate in that sense. Okay, this feng shui or geomancy or feng shu, so it's a feng shui is a geomancy in China, while feng shu is a, 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 a geomancy in Korea. I think kusui is a geomancy in Japan. So that's why I prefer to use geomancy as a common uh, 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 term. So uh, I feel that it is very difficult to label what Germancy is in uh, using Western categories. Western classification simply cannot be applied in my view. So because it is not a clear-cut superstition, although some scholars are arguing that it is uh, nothing but superstition. It is a more than superstition. So some people argue that it is a religion. Yes, it does have religious aspect, but it is more than religion. 
But some people argue that it is a traditional East Asian science. Yes, it does have uh, some scientific element in it, rational and reasoning, but it is uh, more than that. So it is actually, in my view, it has uh, a kind of uh, all three of these elements. <coughs> It, it, it simply doesn't fit into the Western concept. OK, so it's then, then actually, I would like to briefly discuss the, uh, how you choose auspicious site, and the way they practice the, in Korea. There, is a, there are three important factors to be considered by geomancers when they choose auspicious site. This is a quite well-known, commonsensical uh, uh, kind of a method of divining a site in Korea. The first thing to observe is uh, surrounding landscapes, landforms around you, whether you, they have required mountains and also hills and flat land. And then secondly, they will consider nearby water courses. Do we have a river or stream around here? And thirdly, they will consider the favorable cosmic directions. Are we facing the south? Is it very sunny spot or not? That's uh, one of the major concerns. OK, and then I will go over with you very briefly, uh, one by one here. OK, the first the landfall. Landform is the first and most important condition. The feng shui doesn't believe artificial environment in a way. You cannot change mountains. So that's why you are advised to choose auspicious landforms, landscapes. You can make up shortcomings, but not outright artificial creations. So, where is the most uh, I mean, used, important site? It is like this here. So everywhere, it should be like a horseshoe shape forms. Just like a horseshoe here encircling. So to speak, this is just like uh, you're sitting chair there. <laughs> chair with armchair will be the ones. <coughs> armchair sitting there, and then open front. And then when you lean back, and then something to support your back, that's a good site. Just like here, Gyeongbokgung site. Here. Behind the Gyeongbokgung, there is a Bukaksan mountain. That is the hill there. And the side, the so Inwangsan and also Daksan, is where you can rest your arms at there. In the front, it is open field here, all the Seoul city, you see. So that's uh, what I mean by. So comfortable. But if you sit the other way around, what happens? Mountain in front of you, when you want to lean back and nothing to support you, that is a rotten side there. So this is a commonsensical, reflecting common environmental psychology in a way. So the background here is important, the flat the front is important, and the auspicious side is at the foothill of that side, such a side. Okay. And then well, look at that. These landforms are so important to them. The famous Korean geographer, perhaps the most comprehensive and best developed form of East Asian uh, the topography before actually the Western contour, uh, contour line was introduced. Nowadays, the elevation landform is using what? Well, European concept of a contour line eh? elevation. Eh? It was uh, uh, developed by the famous geographer Alexander von Humboldt. Uh, when I went to Berlin, actually, it was a quite moving moment as a geographer, because uh, actually uh, the, it, it was honoring uh, Alexander von Humboldt and Wilhelm Humboldt, his brother there. So it's, uh, before it came, we used this system of uh, judging the elevation and connect connectivity of mountain systems. It is, uh, developed from Feng Shui in a way. In order to ensure that how vital energy is a flow and then where uh, that is resting there. Okay, 
So it's a, the uh, name form is a, so important in choosing auspicious site. Okay, and then auspicious site is like this. If I uh, give you a little bit of a, a close view, so it's a uh, for instance, Gyeongbok uh, 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 Palace is here. That's the uh, hill, or uh, this hill or auspicious site. Hill means cave. Actually, I will be discussing it up more. And then this is uh, actually end of the foot here. This is a high uh, the peak, and then this is a, a continuous range is there. And then this is a, a small stream and a big river uh, flowing there, Han River, so to speak. Okay. And then now the second items to consider is after finding, after determining auspicious landforms, and then you come with uh, water. Water is important, but water has to be nearby you, not where you live on. Which means that where you sleep has to be dry. It, it shouldn't be wet. Nobody wants to uh, sleep on water any in the wet field. But where you, uh, the, the, the spot where you uh, lie on is dry, but not very far from there has to be water. It's like that. So, it's a, for instance, the Gyeongbok Palace. Is where, where that is? It is a dry side. But and then water flowing slowly, gently, the Chang'e Chan and so on. And then this is the Han River. The river. Han River must be nearby. If it is far away then, and that is no good. But yet, you can't build a city on Han River. So if it is too bad, no good. So it is so simple, so commonsensical, isn't it? So, and then actually after water, and then what? And then this is a, a kind of a, uh, uh, determining auspicious directions. That is auspicious directions. Normally, it is uh, southward directions, including southeast and the southwest. Why? I think it has uh, a lot to do with uh, the amount of uh, sunshine you can receive. The sunny side is good side. The sunny side is warm side uh, in winter time, and the cool side in uh, summer time. So it is, uh, of course, uh, when you apply these feng shui principles in southern hemisphere, it will be the other way around, in my view. So it should be, north should be auspicious. Actually, if you choose the right directions, you can save about 20% of heating cost. So it is actually the immigrant from China and Korea and went to New Zealand or Australia. First they thought that, wow, south facing is good. And then also they found that the land was a tree. So they bought it. And then only later on they found that, wow, this is uh, not auspicious site at all. Because uh, actually over there in the southern hemisphere, including Chile and Brazil, we have to choose north facing, because that is the sunny side. So if the south side is in a way wrong world, facing the sun direction, so to speak. OK, and then these uh, desirable uh, directions are examined by geomancers using geomantic compass. This geomantic compass reflects East Asian cosmology and the five elements, yin and yang, and other things, and so on. If you want to discuss those things uh, with me, uh, I, have, uh, I can spend a couple of uh, days with you. <laughs> but it is uh, just uh, simply, it is uh, all cosmology is in it. it. Each one of you can be divine or di uh, I mean divided into one of these categories here. OK, so it's, uh, I will be going a bit faster, because I have a long way to go. So it's a, but I have been given only one hour, so I will be going a bit faster. OK, and then now, uh, the, the origin of feng shui before we come, uh, uh, before it came to New Zealand, uh, uh, not New Zealand, I'm sorry, actually, because I live in New Zealand, in New Zealand came. But it's uh, before it was introduced to uh, Korea, and then uh, what form it was, where it was developed, I will briefly go over. Okay. Uh, some prominent scholars 
such as uh, uh, the root. So the geomancy developed from ancient Chinese custom of ancestor worship and selecting auspicious gravesite. Well, but I think he was wrong in my view. Why? Because I believe geomancy did not develop from gravesite, but it is developed from house site. Why? I have five reasons. That's why actually I discuss this here. This is, this is, and uh, uh, that is that my new view is that actually it's, uh, it is uh, originated from lesser plateau. And uh, I will try to provide uh, this uh, reason again. I, uh, on this topic, I could spend, uh, spend a couple days on it because I spent about uh, uh, 40 days in China uh, starting uh, the roaming around uh, 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 Les Plateau, uh, writing only one article though, one article uh, published on this one, uh, but it, is, uh, just, uh, 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 it was my hobby there. Okay, and then first reason why I think Germancy developed from house site, not from grave site, is that the word uh, uh, or shell. The current romantic term for an auspicious site is show. But why do they call it? It means actually literally cave. This cave means that actually cave dwelling, house. But when you go to auspicious site, there's no cave. But in, in northern China, actually you find the cave, the auspicious site. OK, and then secondly, and then, uh, uh, yes, this kind of cave there. So it's a, when you make a cave, and then so the, when you don't have, a, 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 in order to make a cave, you have to have a cliff wall here. So when you don't have a cliff wall, you just cut out land, just a piece of cave, like cut out here. When I went there, it was April, but still had a snow there. And then here, so when you cut out, you come to have a, just like an armchair cave. So the, the, behind, it is a kind of a, 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 a main mountain and then blue dragon, and then white tiger, just uh, like the uh, soul, so this uh, horseshoe shape is uh, formed. So it's a horseshoe shape, it's an uh, auspicious site there. Okay, so it's a, uh, why do they call, uh, why do they call auspicious site a, a kind of a, a cave? I think it came from ancient Chinese practice of uh, finding auspicious uh, cave dwelling site. Not not auspicious grave site. Okay, and then another thing, second reason is that you see, a desirable soil condition in an auspicious site is a pure fine yellow, uh, yellowish soil. Again, reflect the soil conditions of less plateau and ideal cave dwelling. When you dig out cave, cave is extremely ecological uh, dwelling. Because uh, in the ancient time, when you don't have uh, advanced technique of a building house or uh, a means of heating the house, this house protected uh, the, uh, the cave dwellers from the cold weather. It was, uh, because of heat storage effect. When cold air comes in, the, all the walls will be warming up without uh, actually the burning wood there. In the summertime, with hot air gushing into it, it will cool down by the world temperatures there. So it's a, this one is again when you dig the, uh, the cave, you have to have a pure yellow soil. If you find some black spots or black lines there, and then that is uh, bound to collapse and cave in. Why? It means that water leaked in and then it has decayed uh, that part of the soil. So it's a pure yellow soil is important. Again, it is related to living man's dwelling site rather than uh, dead people's uh, grave site. Okay, thirdly, the shape of the earth mountain support the view. In Chinese geomancy, originated from Les Plateau. In geomancy, mountain shapes are classified into five types, earth mountains, fire mountain, water mountain, wood mountain, and metal mountains. But apart from earth type, all types are explained by analogies. What I mean by that is this. For instance, the, this kind of a sharp edges, this one is called the fire mountains because it is what? It resembles flame of fire, tongue of fire. And then if you find this kind of metal mountain, this is like what? Upside down bell. 
that is always made of metal. And also, when you find this kind of rolling hills, this is like waves. Waves, so it is a water mountain. But this one is like a poplar, like a highly projected mountain that is a wood mountain. And then it is, of course, a trees. But what on earth? Why did they perceive this kind of a strange mountain shape as earth mountains? There's a flat top and also steep slope. Is there such mountains in Korea or in your country? It will be pretty difficult to find. In Around the Seoul, I think the only place you can find it is Nanjido, where it's a rubbish dump. And then it's just it's made, the top is flat and then a steep slope. But there are no naturally shaped mountains like this. But if you go less plateau, you will find plenty of these kind of mountains, like this here. This is the aerial view of it. So here you can see that. Originally, this was a lesser plateau, but soil erosion caused that steep slope. But while when you come up here, it's a flat land. So this is the central mountain, the earth mountain, and the key mountain in geomancy. So you can't explain the shape of an earth mountain without considering uh, the conditions in a lesser plateau, in my view. OK. And then that's uh, the third reason why I believe that and then uh, this uh, German sea is developed from uh, the house side rather than uh, the grave side. OK, and then fourth one is that it's a water course nearby, as I have explained it, because uh, you need the water uh, to live. Why do they uh, uh, say that you have to have water nearby, but not on site? On site, you need to sleep dry, dry site. But water for washing and drinking nearby is needed there. The grave doesn't need that. But house need that. OK. And then fifthly, in my view, actually, uh, that the, uh, the, uh, the hills that act as a wind barrier on the northern side, especially northern uh, northwestern side, reflect desirable conditions of less cave dwellings. Because uh, in there, the cold Siberian air from the northwest it is uh, terrible. So you want to have uh, blocking uh, the, uh, the uh, kind of barriers there, while southeast is open. And this condition is, of course, living conditions. But based on this, I argue that. I think I'm the first one who argued for these kind of uh, 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 things, origin of German sea. Is that is the German sea is from uh, house side rather than grave side. OK, now then we will move to Korea. And then now uh, the, uh, uh, how it was uh, uh, introduced in uh, Korean Peninsula. The art of German sea must have been introduced to Korea with early waves of Chinese uh, cultural contact. But the, uh, the paintings of four guardian deities in the uh, Goguryeo tombs is a proof of that. And also uh, the uh, kind of Hwandosong, Goguryeo, uh, uh, kind of capital uh, cities. And uh, is uh, also another uh, uh, the indication of the introduction of German sea into uh, Korea. For instance, this is uh, the one I mosaic. Uh, I took the photos and then joined there. And then if you see that, you can see that this one is actually here all the way. It is uh, like horseshoe circling. It, it is definitely geomantic at its capital side. And the second one is that actually this is interesting. All of uh, it's from the Goguryeo uh, grave site. And then this kind of concept it is interesting that they used in Japan to determine their capital site of Heian on Heijogyo. If Japan used this kind of mountain shapes, because these ones are all representing uh, of the mountains there. The, the, this, the mountains are there, and this is the north, and this is the south, this is the east, this is the west. So it's a that historical record argued that Japan said, wow, there are three auspicious mountains. And then this is a good place to build a city. This, OK. And then here, the story of removing Buddhist temple structures by the, uh, end of uh, 
uh, eighth century in Korea, geomancy was uh, so important that in order to make uh, royal tombs, they even removed the Buddhist temple. So it's fighting between Buddhist temple and royal families over auspicious site, and royal family won. So this is the proof that geomancy was a practicing. And then later on, uh, the uh, Buddhist monks was, of course, was uh, very, very uh, important uh, uh, there he used. It. OK, and then actually, in this way, the Buddhist and then Germancers were, were actually worked very closely. And then by having uh, 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 German monks, as well as the Buddhist temples in auspicious style, or Buddhist concept in German tales there. So it's, uh, I will be just uh, passing that here. I, I, I spend too much time in all the days there. And then uh, Feng Shui and then Confucianism also is uh, closely associated with it. Geomancy's relationship with Confucianism is uh, echoed in Korean attitude toward family and societies. Both the traditional Confucian family structure may be characterized by patriarchal, patrilineal, and patrilocal relationships. And uh, these relationships are very well reflected in geomancy tales. For instance, uh, a view is very well reflected in the story of a lady from Kim family of Andong district who still then auspicious site for his son, both fathers, for his uh, actually uh, father-in-law's families. So once you are married, you're patrilocal and patrilineal. So you follow husband family. You sever in a way relationships with your own uh, family of birth. So in a way, auspicious site that you, your own birth family found and then uh, secretly stealing it for actually her husband family. This is uh, directly reflecting Confucian values, intermarriage between Confucian ethos and geomantic uh, values uh, uh, in Korea. OK. And then, so in Korea, Confucian family system, these individuals are treated as uh, building blocks of family lineages. And children are seen as an extension of their parents. That's why actually graves are so important. Parents can give blessings to children. Uh, they, they look after it, and they want to find the auspicious side. So it's uh, children are good social security in the means of parents. That is reflected in actually practice of geomancy. That's why you find uh, so many graves in auspicious sites all over Korean mountains. Okay, and then relationships between Feng Shu and shamanism. Shamanism is the original form of a Korean religion there. And then these shamans often uh, re recommended the shifting or modifying houses and graves in order to avoid the misfortunes. They say that, oh yes, my family, my husband is sick. What do I do? And they said, why don't you move your house to another place? Otherwise, uh, your husband will be dead. And this kind of uh, shamanistic advice. At the same time, the, this kind of uh, uh, shaman so will be saying that, well, this is a bad side. And then modify your houses. And then modify your gate, and so on. This is, again, is a two ways of going, but it is an association uh, between Germancy and Feng Shu, clearly. OK. And then here now, Feng Shu and other religions, these the contemporary ones, rather, but this, uh, the, I mean, recently, and the, uh, re I mean, the, just this uh, transition between traditional society and modern society, Tonghak movement was uh, very important. Tonghak, in fact, was born as a reaction to newly introduced uh, Western religion, uh, Christianity, Catholicism. And then, but they absorbed and retained so much of traditional value that actually they used the Germancy in uh, 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 predicting as well as uh, uh, building their uh, the fortresses and uh, where they, their dwelling site. And then here, the sacred canon of Donghak, Yongdam Yusa, expresses geomantic explanations of uh, birth and gene genealogical background of the founder in order to uh, kind of mystify as well as a uh, uh, kind of a uh, uh, kind uh, what could uh, give a uh, uh, but uh, 
supernatural, uh, supernatural power uh, to uh, their, uh, the founders, uh, they often uh, associated with the auspicious side geometrically. Okay, and then here the leaders of the Dongak movement, the Jeonbongjun, uh, also subscribe to geomancy. It is a quite clearly known fact. Okay, so it's uh, geomancy was also closely related to traditional social upheavals in Korea. And then, of, of course, a thousand, uh, almost uh, six, seven hundred, uh, 800 years ago, the Myo Chongsu movement to rebelling against the, the central government in order to move capital from Gaesong or Songak to Pyongyang. It was of geometric reasons, they said. We have to move it. So they, he plotted it. And then also Hong Yongne's rebellion, again, they heavily utilized the geomancy when they were using it. So it was, in a way, attracting the people's attention as well as a, a kind of a making people believe that, well, this is going to happen. Okay. So it's a Pungsu and Korean landscapes. Now, I wanted to spend more time on this, uh, but I will spend uh, only a moderate amount of time. But, but if you have uh, a lot of questions, I can just uh, extend it. More. Okay, best evidence of the importance of Germans in Korean culture is uh, reflected in Korean the landscapes of uh, settlement and graves. So commoners, as well as royal families of Joseon dynasty, have applied the geomancy in selection of grave sites of their deceased uh, members. So it's, uh, this is so critical. That is why I will be commenting on a little bit later, but Jung Ya Jung, the famous uh, scholar of a uh, later uh, part of the Joseon uh, uh, period, Joseon dynasty, he argued that about the two thirds of all crimes occurred in, during that time was related to geomancy. So without the geomancy, there will be no crime. Fightings over auspicious house site and fightings over auspicious grave site. It was uh, real, no joke. Okay, so, and then you can see that here. In this picture, you can see uh, that the geomancy coming, dragon coming down here. As, and then end of the foothill, there's a grave. And the mourner is uh, working on it. Here, this Korean painting of that here. Oh, so here, actually, uh, just like uh, the, what the Gyeongbok Palace, the, the same principles were applied whether it is a palace or house or villages or graves. This is interesting. In that sense, it does have some scientific element in it. Generalize the principles they had. Okay, and then also oh, the graves are like this. This is in uh, uh, the Gyeonggi-do, uh, not very far from Seoul here, ancestors, and behind it here, and then underneath here, behind it, this is where you live, actually, house. So it's uh, ancestors uh, who are dead and then living yourself are one, not separated. But ancestors, auspicious energies will be delivered to you. So in that way, you are one there. Okay, and then actually these graves, the features is from my ancestor and then uh, uh, the, the rural area and then there and so it's uh, actually uh, they worship here that much they pay the tribute and the right the, 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 every autumn they do and but this is then auspicious site they have to choose and then also arrange auspiciously there okay. And then here, the so fightings of auspicious gravesite was a common scene during Joseon dynasty. And also these fightings were recorded by even missionaries, Catholic missionaries, Father Dale, who recorded the three cases. In my case, one case is actually, one was buried nearby your ancestors' graves. And then by law, you can't dig out there until the, uh, the descendants of that grave dig out. And then actually the person who had the power and then the capture the, 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 uh, the descendant and then make him the, 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 the grave that he just made. It. This kind of things were recorded by uh, Father Dale there. And also, and then settlement landscapes. Many Korean villages are situated at the foothill with an open field in front and sloping hills behind, just like a Gyeongbok Palace. Okay. 
Uh, so it's, uh, behind is a hell and the front is uh, open there. Few Korean settlement sites are free from these geomantic influences. If you are traveling from Seoul to Busan through what the uh, uh, Gyeongbu uh, Kosokdoro uh, uh, highways, you observe villages, both sides. Uh, I'm not lying. It is true that you will find it. At the end of a foothill, you will find villages. Not in just in the middle of a, a kind of flat land. Normally, the borderline between a transitional zone between mountains, hills, and the flat areas. That is the house side. Why? Because of geomancy. Okay, and then uh, okay, and then this is this is a city, the uh, auspicious city here. And then again, mountains are coming in from the, this way. Uh, and then this is a, a kind of a, uh, what, uh, uh, county seat. And then villages, uh, all the residential areas in front of uh, this city. Actually, uh, my uh, hometown, the Sonsan uh, of uh, Gyeongsan province. Uh, there. Yeah. OK. And then if you see that, these are the details of that famous map uh, I showed you in the earlier. And then you see that this is a kind of auspicious, uh, auspicious site is in here, but they have exaggerated in order to make the auspicious site here. It's not actually as good as it is, but he stretched a bit further. So it is kind of a Hosan Chinglung, a white tiger, a blue uh, azure dragon, uh, and then uh, this is a main mountain here, and then just like a horseshoe shape. Whenever you find a horseshoe shape, there is a village. There is a settlement there. So how can you understand East Asian landscapes, especially Korean settlement landscapes, without knowing geomancy? It is impossible to appreciate Korean landscapes without knowing the geomancy. <coughs> OK. And then here, all important uh, uh, cities in Korea were located and planned by applying geomantic principles. So, uh, actually, uh, the, uh, the famous uh, Korean uh, uh, traditional geography book, Chin Jong Dong Yeoji Sungnam, uh, or uh, kind of a revised uh, 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 the Korean geography book, present every county has a geometrically important mountains. So, so without the geomancy, you can't understand uh, uh, why they have described it that way. Okay, in the, this is a soul here, if you see that. So this is the Gyeongbok Palace. At the end of a foothill, uh, this is a uh, 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 mountain, Yunnan mountain. And then but this is actually a bit weak side, but it is uh, 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 the uh, uh, Azure Dragon, or where there was a Seoul National University before. OK, and then this palace behind it, this is the, uh, I mean the palace of here, the throne, throne hall here, Gonjongjian. Behind it, you can see this mountain connection. What happened? So this is auspicious site. But is Beijing then auspicious? According to geomancy? No, it can't be. It isn't. Why? Because uh, nothing to lean back. So, so what did they do over there? They made it artificial hill, artificial black mountain. What is that called over there in Beijing? That is called Jingshan. Jingshan is artificial mountain but 400 meters high, so completely artificial, flat land, but they get it, is provided in. So you see, in a way, all East Asian uh, what the landscapes, uh, uh, cities, in order to understand, you needed to know geomancy. Nanjing, the same. I, I, I'm sure many of you have been to Kyoto. Kyoto, the same shapes. Kyoto. So it is then actually behind it. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, so that's why uh, I took these photos there. And also, okay, so now uh, I, will, I will really go, I have to be a bit faster. Okay, geomantic images of nature. The images, that this is a Korean mentality in understanding Korean attitude toward the nature or Korean mentalities regarding environment. There are actually understanding geomancy is the key. Here, the, uh, here, magical images, personified images, and vulnerable images of nature, as well as uh, there is no clear boundary between humanity and nature uh, that led to uh, I mean, uh, no division between culture and nature. 
Okay, in order to do that, I would like to introduce uh, two uh, funny stories. Funny stories, uh, but the stories not just uh, for enjoyment, but the, the stories so in order to interpret important uh, principles behind it. Okay, that is that first story is a famous Confucian scholar, Song Xiyu's grave. Actually, the grave is uh, located in auspicious uh, mountains. That is uh, shaped like an uh, army general. But in order to have an army general function as an army general, what do you need? Soldiers, say. Eh? Without the soldiers, army general, there is nothing. But unfortunately, that landscape didn't have an uh, army general. But you have to provide the army general. What did they do? Actually, they moved the periodic marketplaces that was housing about uh, 20, 30 kilometers away by paying quite a large sum of money to the people. And then moved that mountain and the uh, shop or and then the people in front of uh, the grave. And then now what happened? Every five days, that mountain can enjoy commanding thousands of people, thousands of soldiers. But here you can see that there's no boundary between humanity and nature. Human beings can serve nature as they are without becoming mountains. And also mountains can influence human beings without becoming human beings as a nature. So this is the exciting aspect of uh, uh, actually environmental ideas that you can detect only through by appreciating folk narratives, legend and mythologies and folk tales. Okay, then second story is like this. The, the, the story of uh, Yi clan, Gosong Yishi. It's also Yi clan of uh, Gosong, a geometric images of a reclining cow. Actually, that is that mountains were perceived as a reclining cow. Reclining cow, what do they do? Cows, they will sleep, eh? Sleep. But when it wakes up, you need to eat food. So, actually, that is auspicious that I mean, so many, uh, I mean, uh, just uh, great men were born and then each time when they visit their villages from Seoul, they have to, they have to provide services for them. And then the villagers were sick of it. And then actually German monk advised them, if you're sick of it, you can destroy that boulder in front of uh, or that mountain. And then so they did it. And then no prosperity. No great government officers were visiting them. And then so they didn't have to work. And they were free from them. And then only later on, this Yi family realized that what happened. That's why our prosperity is gone. And then they put together that rock, broken rock together. And then again, they come to produce a more famous man. Well, what does it say? It is a funny story, but again, nature can either be destroyed by human hand or it can be restored by human hand. Either actually life and death of nature or environment is in your hand. This is a deep ecology concept. Even if this story is for the modern days, it will convey important ecological concepts. So it's so, okay. And then, okay, the story I just saw you uh, summarize it, so I can hide my part now. Yeah. Okay, so it's a, from the uh, uh, geometric landscapes in Korea have been personified as an army general or reclining cow. And also, it is personified the landscapes were considered as having magical powers by blessing people to produce important government officers or be rich. And also, if you happen to live in sailing boat, sailing boat the landscapes, you will be rich. If you happen to live nearby uh, writing brush villages, and you will become a clever scholar, and so on. This kind of a, a, a magical power is uh, in exchange, influenced each other between nature, environment, and human being, human societies. So, if so people can. Uh, destroy the harmony of uh, geometric landscapes, but the, at the same time it can be restored, as I have said, 
but there is no clear boundary between humanity and nature in geomantic landscapes, as I have commented. OK, and then, actually, in conclusion, Koreans' intense interest in geomancy caused many social problems with the crimes committed from fighting over geomantic auspicious site, as well as a waste of a huge material wealth for finding auspicious site and building uh, such a structures so suitable for them. But it also, uh, 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 I mean, however, uh, it is, uh, also has uh, some positive uh, ideas, favorable impact on Korean traditional environmental management that by conserving forest surrounding cities during Joseon Dynasty that uh, finished uh, 1910 before then. Actually, the mountains in the Yinong areas, as well as the Naksan areas and Buaksan, that was all sacred ground. You can't invade it. You can't go in there and build houses. It was protected. I wish they had that now. And then Namsan as well, it was protected. So for geomantic reasons. Otherwise, your fortune will be gone. It was a re religious belief. But now, that belief is gone. It was fully developed, and we lost the green belt. So natural green belt, we could have saved it, in a way, if we believe in geomancy. It's, I'm not promoting for uh, believing in geomancy. Actually, I'm against it. But, as I said, alchemy has uh, some positive side, although it was uh, superstition. Geomancy is basically superstition. But it does have some useful, important, and valuable environmental ideas, ecological concept, which we can draw and use it. So, uh, and also, during chosen time, King ordered uh, the people to clean up the uh, streams, Cheonggyecheon. Actually, he sometimes uh, spend uh, the large sum of money to do that. But when we finished that, it was covered with concrete later on. Only now, artificially restored. OK, part of it. OK, and then actually, so Peng Su or Geomancy is certainly from China, not from Korea. But some scholars argue that Geomancy is from Korea. I feel that. Arguing Germancy is a Korean is just like arguing uh, for, I mean, the Christianity is from Korea. <laughs> it can't be our. It is uh, from China, but it became Korean, just like a Christian Confucianism. Korean Confucianism is somewhat different from uh, Chinese. It is uh, origin is uh, China, but it is uh, developed in Korean culture and Korean context, just like uh, your Christianity. Although it was Middle Eastern, Palestine, but it became European or American or somewhere else, the Filipino and so on. So ever since the idea was introduced into Korea, it has become an extremely important part of Korean way of thinking. Its impact is clearly visible in Korean landscapes as well as Korean religion. I hope I have demonstrated that. And so it is almost impossible, this is my conclusion, it is almost impossible to appreciate Korean culture adequately without appreciating the role of geomancy in it. I think that's uh, where I end my talk. Now. So it's, uh, now if you, if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer. Yes, thank you.